How we going guys, the Loot Gamer over here, and it's about that time fellas. Here we go, the full review of the iPhone 10. I've been using this bad boy since Friday, it's been about 5 days using this beast. But I wanted to show you guys, is it worth getting this iPhone 10, or should you guys just wait for the iPhone 11, <laughs> or even get yourself the iPhone 8, especially coming from the iPhone 7 Plus. In this video, I'll be showing you guys all the cons and pros, and my personal experience with this phone for these 5 days. But yeah, fellas, let's just dive in. So the first thing that I want to really go through with you guys is most importantly, the design. Because that's the first thing we usually notice with any sort of smartphone that we get on the market. This design, guys, is really incredible. The fact that Apple incorporated an OLED display for the first time in an iPhone, it is pretty good. It's about time because, honestly, fellas, the Android displays have always been the best in my personal opinion. I'm no Apple fanboy, but if it's a good product, I would definitely say it's a good product. But this is an OLED display, which is really nice. And they actually also incorporated a stainless steel on the side of this phone, which sort of blends in with the color space gray. That's the main reason why I actually got it. But looking at the top over here, guys, as you can see, we get our antenna band. We get our lock switch that goes up or down. We get our volume up and down too. On this side, it's nice and clean. We also get our antenna band at the bottom. Looking at the bottom over here, guys, we get our speaker grills, which is dual speakers. We also get our Thunderbolt port over there. On the other side of the phone, we get our antenna bands. And on the side over here, we get our SIM card tray. And then we get our power slash Siri evoke button. And we're also able to take screenshots just by holding this button over here and that button on the top over there. Or even, you know, um, switch off your phone as well. And on this side over here, we get more antenna bands. On the top over here, it's just nice and blank. Moving the phone to the back. We get a glass back which does support wireless charging and of course it does support fingerprints all over the place which is crazy but of course we get our dual cameras at the back which i'll show you guys more features on that a bit later but as you guys can tell it's a pretty reflective glass you can see me recording this video over here because it's pretty reflective but that's the first thing about this phone that you do notice and then of course we are greeted by the display looking at this beautiful display guys you'll definitely notice a massive massive difference the fact that you know from edge to edge display which is a 5.8 inch uh, diagonal OLED display as I said earlier the first one that Apple has ever incorporated and on top of that as well it's a super retina display so the pixelation on this bad boy is a 2436 by 1125 which is about 458 pixels per inch so you are definitely getting yourself a beautiful looking display so if I even zoom in you guys can't even see how crisp it is but looking you know back from the previous iPhone 7 plus that I had before you could, you'll trust me, you'll definitely notice a massive difference in terms of pixelation, even the wide color gamut as well, because this does support P3 wide color gamut display. And of course, this is the first iPhone that does support HDR display as well. Of course, you gotta have applications that do support it, like Netflix, which is pretty good. But this also does support 3D touch, which is from the previous generation, and also does support a new true tone display. So a new two-tone display basically means it's able to adjust the sort of display depending on the environment that you're in. So if you're outside, it will sort of adjust to that sort of environment. If it's at night, it will adjust the colors as well, which is pretty cool technology that's Apple incorporated. So I really, really do like that. And of course, Apple do say this is a fingerprint resistant OLED coating. But to be honest with you guys, not really because I get so many fingerprints at the back of my phone or even the front. So, yes, Apple said, but to be honest, this phone will definitely, definitely attract fingerprints. Most importantly, guys, powering this beast of a phone over here is a new A11 Bionic chip with 64-bit architecture. This is the first neural engine. Basically, what this means, guys, is we will be getting about 20% more faster performance compared to the 7 Plus, and we also get ourselves augmented reality. There's only one application on the app store that does support this. So basically what happens is within a game, I could use this table over here to actually create my own augmented reality and actually start, you know, fighting against enemies, which I find pretty, pretty cool. But how many applications support it? Only just one. But I thought I'd just let you guys know that. And of course, embedded in this phone as well is an M11 motion code processor. So basically it'll sort of, you know, track your motion and in terms of how you sort of walk or if you're on a bit of a mission on a diet or if you want to do lots of running and you, and you also want to track that kind of stuff, this chip is perfectly good for that as well. So a magic question that I always get asked is, how are you used to having no home button on your screen loot? Like how do you cope with it? For me, it's like always adjusting to the new technology is what makes this phone worth the paper for me. So the first thing that I want to show you guys is how do you unlock this phone? So all you got to just do is look at your phone. So all I got to do right now is look at my phone and then you'll see that there's an unlock button over there on top where it says 1103 and all I got to just do is 
Swipe, swipe from the bottom. I'll just do it again and I'll show you guys. I just look at my phone and then you'll see the unlock mechanism on top. And I got, all I gotta do is do is swipe from the bottom, just like that. Nice and smooth, nice and precise. No issues whatsoever. It works about 99% of the time. To be honest, guys, when I, am, when I am in bed though, and I'm lying and tilting my head, sometimes it doesn't work, which is annoying. So Apple probably needs to fix that. But besides, when you're looking at your phone directly, it definitely, definitely, definitely works. When you're wearing sunglasses or wearing a hat, it definitely works as well. So no, so no dramas on that. Second question I get asked is, how do you multitask on this phone? How you multitask is like this. All you gotta just do is swipe from the bottom to, to about the middle of, of the screen, just, just like that. And then you'll see your cards that you're able to multitask by. So for example, if I wanna go back to my mail, all I gotta do is just do that. If I wanna go back to my previous app, I could always swipe from the middle and then just go to my previous application just like that. There's also another way of doing it, but this way is a bit difficult. You always got to use two hands at least. All you got to just do is scroll from the bottom of the screen, just like that. So make sure it's actually in level like that, and then just swipe from the bottom. But as you guys could tell, sometimes it doesn't work, but I like to just use the easier way of just doing it like that, and then just doing it like that. How do you, how do you also close applications? All you got to just do is scroll from the bottom just like that second way guys is how do you sort of you know exit and actually force close the application so all you got to do guys is just swipe from the middle of the screen just like that hold on to the card until you see yourself some minuses on top and all you got to just do is exit it just like that i really do wish apple would have a force close all option because if i have let's say my notes open i have my home open I have my health application open as well. And then I have to go all the way from the bottom and then hold on to it just like that. And then force quit every single application. It's so time consuming. I thought by now Apple would have, you know, had a force close all, but unfortunately guys, they don't. But the next feature that I want to show you guys, most importantly, is, is the control center. So in the control center, usually, guys, in the beginning, we would actually swipe from the bottom of the screen, and then we'll see all of our controls, but not on this bad boy. On the iPhone 10, how you access your control center is usually on the right of the screen. So all you got to do over here is swipe, swipe from the top of the screen just like that, and then you'll see we get all of our controls that you're actually able to customize to whatever you like. So I just wanted my have to have my flash there and my calculator there most importantly my uh, low power mode over there there at the bottom which is very useful and in case you guys are wondering how do you see your battery percentage because on top as you guys could tell there's no battery percentage all you got to just do is swipe from the bottom of your control center and then you'll see it right there so apple's changed a couple of things especially even the ui with this iphone 10 especially because of the bezel-less sort of display which is really nice which i which i personally prefer but that's how you actually access your control center. Next thing guys is video. We want to know how does video look like on this phone. So the first thing that we got to do is not all applications actually support the full sort of edgeless sort of display on video, but Safari does, which is a good thing. And certain apps are being updated like the YouTube got updated yesterday for it, which is pretty fresh. So let me just show you guys how you actually look at it right now. So this is actually one of my videos on Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, the full collection and collectibles. So over here guys, as you can tell, we have black bars on the sides here, but to make it into full screen, all you got to just do is, is double tap it just like that. And the the whole screen is actually filled with the actual image for me i really really love this because you know the iphone 7 plus and the 8 usually have the bezels on the side and the screen is big but this is a 5.8 inch screen so it's slightly bigger than the other one so for me personally i really really like the added to the actual did incorporate but what i don't like though is the fact that it zooms into the video so if i want to double tap you'll see that my subscribe and my like is actually shown now but if i want to double tap it it zoomed in so i wish that we're able to actually make it you know into the correct scale and actually make the subscribe actually come back to where it was unlike you just zooming into the video and you're actually missing out on certain content so that's something i don't like though but let me show you guys how loud this gets This new DLC rather coming out soon. Let's take that, put that to the side. And let's take out Alloy in our glory. And the first thing, guys, that I could say is, wow. A lot of attention to detail. It just feels like these guys are getting better and better at making these pop vinyls. 
So as you guys can hear, of course, this does support dual speakers from the top and also from the bottom. You know, I would say it's about 20 to 25 percent louder than the iPhone 7 Plus. Not like a massive, whoa, it's way louder, but it is louder. But let me just show you guys more content, especially for my music, uh, in case you're wondering how much louder is it. So um, let me just go to Adele over here. No, not Adele, something a bit louder than Adele. Uh, let's play some Alpine over here and see how loud this is. Pretty loud. You know, it, it is significantly louder than the previous model, but I would say, again, 20 to 25% louder. And of course, we want to see games that do support the iPhone 10. The only just two games that do. Let me just, you know, boost up uh, Super Mario. And yeah, as you guys could tell, it's a full screen, which is really gorgeous and beautiful. So not many applications do support this new phone, but when they do, it really makes it immersive. As you know, the whole screen is actually filled up. So, you know, let's just check this out. I've never even played this. Tap to begin. Uh, you can play Remix 10 after the finished tutorial, whatever. Let's just play this bad boy up. But as you guys can tell, you know, having this edgeless display really immerses you in the game. So let me say later. I don't want to link anyone. Agree. I don't need no nickname. Let me just... Put, put in my nickname for you guys. All done, guys. Let me just skip this part over here because what we want to just see is how gaming actually works on this phone. So, yeah, he is over here looking all, looking all crazy. But, yeah, guys, it's really immersive having this full screen. But what I'll do in my next video is I'll show you gaming on when more games actually do get supported by it. Let's have a look over here. So, automatically run. Okay. So all I gotta do is jump, I'm assuming. Swipe, swipe from the front. Whoops, <laughs> I closed the application. So he'll automatically vault over small objects. As you can tell. So Mario will automatically vault over small enemies too. So you know, it's, it's really cool. But that's just like a simple and small preview but what I, as I said earlier, guys, in my next video, I'll show you guys more sort of gaming on the iPhone 10. So, guys, next, the really cool feature that I really like the most, guys, is the new portrait mode. As you can tell, we get all these options over here. We get natural lights. We get the studio lights. We get the uh, contour light over there. We even get the beautiful stage light. And we even get the whole stage light mono. So, all these different effects. Of course, this, also, this is in beta, of course, but I thought I'll show you guys live on the video how it actually looks like. So if I want to have natural light, I can just take a photo of that and it'll actually make it look a bit more natural. But, 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 but what I will do is I'll show you guys images on how it actually does look like within um, a certain clip over here. But, you know, it's a really nice additive to actually have. And even the fact that you're able to um, change that to even studio light, which makes it a bit more bright, as you guys could tell. And even, you know... Um, the contour light as well so it adds a bit more contours on your complexion and even the stage light so in case you wanted to take a photo of this over here let me just come down so y'all could see it it's a really really cool sort of detail so as you guys could tell over there i'm all dark in the background and all you on all, all you guys just see is my ugly face <laughs> so it's kind of funny and pretty cool at the same time on, on how these things actually do work. So I thought I'd just show you guys the true depth camera as well. But most importantly, in case you guys are also wondering, how do you face, how do you guys um, sort of do uh, the face ID? Let me just put my passcode over here. Um, face ID is pretty, pretty simple. Um, I showed you guys that in my previous video over there, but I'll show you guys again in case you guys want to see. So all you got to do, guys, right here is, is just set up your face ID. So how it works is it sort of uses the infrared camera on the top there and actually analyzes your face. So all you got to do is say get started over here and then look at the actual phone and then just move your head in the direction that actually wants you to move it in, which is pretty simple and easy. And all you got to do is hit continue at the bottom and then do the same thing again. And then just make it around just like that, but nice and slow at this time. So it takes more of a sort of accurate face presentation of you. And it says face ID is now set up. So what I'll do now is I'll just close my phone. I'll lock it. 
And then what I'll do now is I'll just wake my phone up just like that. And then I have a look at my phone and then it unlocks just like that. So it's a pretty easy and beautiful seamless transition. I really, really love Face ID. But, but what I want to show you guys now is, of course, the 12, mix of, the 12 megapixel camera, how that actually works and how clear it is. But right now, I'll show you guys a video. It was I was doing this in my backyard, so please, guys, bear with me. So here we go, guys. I thought I'd take a, uh, a clip on a very sort of low light place, and then I'll go into highlight and see how this phone actually performs in mid sort of light. What I'll do is I'll also zoom in and see how stable this phone looks. Pretty good detail. I'm zooming in quite a lot, 4.8. Pretty nice and neat. As you guys can tell, there's a lot of sun here, so I want to see how well this does, especially in where there's a lot of light. Let me just zoom into this. As you guys can tell, it's a pretty stable phone. Not bad at all. Right now, what I'll do, guys, is I'll take some pics so we can see how this 12 megapixel can handle, handle the light. So yeah, it is, guys, a front-facing camera. I'm using this in, like, pretty dark light. It's pretty all right. I, I would say I'd upgrade from the 7 Plus, definitely. But when I go into light over here, it does a pretty good job, too takes pretty good contours on my face so let me just go back make the sun come come be at the back of me and see how this works pretty decent what do you guys think So the golden question is, guys, how does the battery life actually, you know, aim on this iPhone 10? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it okay? To be honest, it's pretty much identical to the 7 Plus. So I got about 7 hours and 28 minutes of usage and Stava at 26 hours and 14 minutes. And I was using the shit out of this phone. I was using it 24-7, guys. I was, as you guys could tell, I was on eBay a lot. Uh, emoji me is a lot as well, but I was mostly doing YouTube stuff and videos taking and stuff But I thought I'd just show you guys, you know seven hours and 28 minutes using the phone a lot is pretty pretty good So can you last a full day? Um, with using your phone definitely definitely you guys can and of course this does support while it's charging So you're able to charge this phone to about 50% in about 30 minutes or full charge within about, I would say, an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. So a pretty nice additive to have. So this is a pretty good uh, battery indicator on the phone. So is it an upgrade from the iPhone 7? Definitely. Is it an upgrade from the iPhone 7 Plus? Not really, guys, but you're sort of getting a 7 Plus plus an iPhone 7 combined because, as you know, it's much smaller than, than the 7 Plus. But, of course, diagonally, it's actually um, a bigger screen. But I thought I'd just let you guys know about the battery life on this bad boy over here. So the golden question is, guys, was it worth paying 1829 Australian dollars for the 256 gigabyte iPhone 10? To be honest with you guys, no, it wasn't. I love my technology. I absolutely love my phones, but since I'm a whore when it comes to, to, to technology, I like, I'm, a, I'm an impulse buyer and I just love the latest and the greatest. If I was not into technology at all, or if I didn't really value smartphones, I would definitely not spend that kind of money on a phone like this. So to, so to the average consumer, absolutely not. To me, absolutely yes, because I love technology. But to be honest with y'all, coming from the 7 Plus, all the way to the iPhone 10 in terms of upgrades, definitely a thumbs up for me. Coming from the fact that you get a better display, you know, close to a QHD display, no home button, edge to edge display, a thumbs up for me. Also, of course, the any emojis, a thumbs up for me as well. So there are many things about this phone that are very, very worth getting, but to spend $1,800 on a phone, it is pretty insane. And thankfully, I got a very supportive wife who loves my YouTube shit and she really supports my channel. That's why she, she actually allowed me to get the phone. But for most fellas, if you're thinking of getting this phone, especially coming from the iPhone 7 Plus, and you do have that kind of paper in, in your pocket, then definitely grab it. But 
if you feel like is it really worth the upgrade i'm budgeting on something else then to be honest fellas i wouldn't get it but thank you very much for watching this video though really really appreciate the love and i'll see you in my next video